and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Israeli and European Jewish leaders are offering condolences today to the victims of yesterday's London terror attack. The attack claimed the lives of a police officer and two others, and roughly 20 more were injured. The European Jewish Congress, in a statement, called the car ramming turned stabbing attack cowardly and barbaric. Rabbi Ephraim Mirvis, the chief rabbi of the UK, said that the attack at the heart of the democracy in Westminster, quote, will serve only to unite us against the scourge of violence and terrorism. Israeli government leaders echoed those sentiments, with Deputy Foreign Minister Tsipi Otoveli stating both that Israel stands together in solidarity with the victims and that, quote, terror is terror wherever it occurs and we will fight it relentlessly, end quote. Tani Danon, the Israeli ambassador to the UN, said that Israel stands as one with the British people as we all work together to defeat the scourge of terrorism. We send our condolences and wish a speedy recovery to all those injured. In a show of solidarity, which has become nearly a ritual, the Tel Aviv City Council building was also lit up as the flag of the UK. The attack took place right outside the British Parliament building and on the nearby Westminster Bridge. The terrorist first plowed his car into pedestrians on the bridge and then got out of his car to stab the police officer to death before finally being shot and killed himself. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu returns from China today to a political crisis over the launch of the new public broadcasting corporation slated for next month. The Prime Minister has threatened to call early elections if his coalition doesn't cancel reforms advanced by his own party, Likud, that would shut down the Israeli broadcasting company. Netanyahu is expected to hold marathon meetings on the issue with Finance Minister Moshe Kahlon, who has hinted that if a compromise is not reached soon, he might leave the Prime Minister's ruling coalition, forcing an early election. Kahlon's vehemently opposed closing the IBA, saying that doing so would be a waste of funds. On Monday, Israeli media reported that the company's decision to hire veteran news anchor Geula Evin had greatly motivated the Prime Minister's decision. Evan is married to Gideon Saar, a former interior and education minister who resigned from Likud in 2014. He's expected to make a political comeback, though, and is considered by many political insiders as a viable candidate against Netanyahu in the Likud primaries. As of yet, Netanyahu hasn't updated Communications Minister Tzachi Anegbi or Tourism Minister Yariv Levine in regards to holding meetings, and Kahlon has said that he hasn't spoken to the Prime Minister since last Friday. Next week, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres will travel to Jordan to attend an Arab summit following a row over the release of a UN report accusing Israel of being an apartheid state. Ahead of the Arab League summit, Guterres will arrive in Amman on Monday for talks with King Abdullah II and to visit a refugee camp. An Arab delegation had met with Guterres earlier to protest the removal of the report by the UN Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia and the removal of the agency's head, Rima Khalaf. The report's authors concluded that Israel has established an apartheid regime that systematically institutionalizes racial oppression and domination of the Palestinian people as a whole. The report had been promptly condemned by the United States, Israel, and Guterres, and an aide from Guterres' office said that the report had been published without prior consultations and that did not reflect his views. Palestinian Authority UN Ambassador Riyad Mansour has said that bullying tactics and intimidation led to the dismissal of both the report and Rima Khalaf. Discussing female integration in the military, IDF Chief of Staff Gadi Eisenkot has just met with religious Zionist rabbis yesterday. The topic has become quite the controversial issue as the religious rabbis contested that women integrate with men in the military, while Eisenkot reportedly argued for its necessity. Despite the general disagreement, Rabbi Yaakov Medan said that atmosphere was positive, and that while no decision was made, Chief Eisenkot was attentive and understanding, and greatly desires to connect both the religious community and indeed everyone to feel good and as an organic part of the IDF. Religious soldiers say that integration is problematic because the closeness goes against their religious diktats. Rabbi Igal Levenstein, who runs a religious army preparatory program, even went as far as to say that Jewish women in the IDF, quote, are not Jewish on the way out, and that the military drives them crazy, making them unfit for marriage. Advocates for integration say primarily that nobody should be excluded from serving, especially given the manpower shortage in combat positions. Women in the IDF have also proven to be effective in combat roles in the Artillery Corps, Search and Rescue, Border Police, Navy, and the Air Force. The long and hard-fought battle for nine Venezuelan Jews is finally over, as the Israeli government finally both approves their conversions to Judaism and welcomes them into Israel. Under the Israeli law of return, Jews from anywhere in the world can emigrate to Israel. But the government was wary that the group of Venezuelans was converting just to take advantage of this law and escape from their home country. 
Therefore, Israel denied their application in late 2016, but finally reversed it in January after a group of liberal and ultra-Orthodox officials came to an agreement in the wake of a PR nightmare. Regardless of the ruling here in the government, however, the nine Venezuelans have indeed been living a Jewish lifestyle for years prior to deciding to making Aliyah. One from the group, Franklin Perez, already gave his kids Jewish names and traveled over three hours to Caracas for kosher meat back in Venezuela. Rabbi Meija from a Spanish-speaking conservative movement confirmed that, quote, This is not a new thing. This is not a fad. These people didn't decide yesterday, oh, Venezuela is going down the drain, let's find some place to go. Everything Jewish that they have, they built which gives you a sense of ownership and pride that is not only commendable but worthy of imitation." End quote. The Venezuelan immigrants are now living in the Negev in government housing until they have learned Hebrew and have integrated into Israeli society. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.